I have the honor of welcoming my colleague, Mayuka Vidari. She's a software engineer at Ripple, and she's going to talk to you about XRPL Pi, the library for interacting with the ledger. Just to get a baseline, let's see a show of hands here and comments in the chat if you're virtual. How many of you have heard of XRPL Pi prior to Apex? Okay, we got a few hands here. And how many of you have actually used XRPL Pi? Got some folks, nice. So XRPL Pi is the main supported Python library to interact with the XRP ledger. We chose to write it in Python because it's one of the main programming languages that people use used by machine learning engineers, data scientists, and developers who just want to write a quick script. And this library was first launched in March 2021. The library closely mirrors RippleD in all its interfaces, which means that you can use both library-specific documentation as well as all other documentation, including other RippleD documentation. For those who aren't familiar, RippleD is basically the implementation of the XRP ledger protocol itself. There are, there are class models for every single RippleD request method and transaction type. And these models all natively check the shape of the object to make sure that they're valid. There are two types of network clients, one that supports a JSON RPC connection to a RippleD node, and one that supports a WebSocket connection. There is a wallet class that you can use to store and interact with key pairs. There are native signing and serialization capabilities to make it super easy to sign and submit all of your transactions. There are also a number of convenient, helpful abstraction functions that do a lot of things that you very commonly have to do when interacting with the XRP ledger, such as getting the current transaction fee, getting an account's XRP balance, and signing and submitting a transaction in one shot. The library also supports async IO, which is the Python method of working with asynchronous functions. So I've told you about what you can do with XRPL Pi. Now let's see it in action. I will walk through how to connect to the ledger, how to send requests to get information from the ledger, how to create and send transactions, and how to determine if your transactions were actually successful. Okay, so first we're going to actually install this library, which you can do via pip. And I've already got this installed. Now we can actually create our network client so that we can interact with the ledger. And for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to be using the async IO support. And now we can create our client. And we can connect it to the testnet, which is uh, basically a, uh, an, a, a copy of the XRP ledger that doesn't involve real money for the purposes of testing all of your apps. And I don't have this memorized. It's written on a little sticky note here. I'm not that good at memorizing things. And now we can uh, just send a ping request to make sure that this is actually connected to the testnet or that it can have a connection. And we can just do a client.request and send a ping transaction or a ping request. And you can see that the request was indeed a success. There's nothing in this particular result because it's a ping request. It's just making sure that the connection is indeed valid. So uh, now to basically do anything on the XRP ledger, you need an account. So we can get an account by using a faucet. And the, the faucets are really great for just getting some fake XRP on the testnet that you can play with without needing to deal with real XRP. And you can get that using, there's a function called generate faucet wallet. And we can just create our wallet using this function.
It takes a sec because it's confirming that the transaction has actually gone through from the faucet to make sure that your wallet is indeed funded when you first use it. And so now you can see that the wallet is indeed instantiated. The public key is visible right here. The private key is hidden so that when people like me are doing live demos, you don't accidentally print out your private key. And the classic address is in the form of the addresses that you're all used to seeing for XRP ledger accounts. Now that we have this account, let's check the balance to make sure that it does indeed have some XRP. So there's a function that is conveniently called get balance that just gets you your XRP balance. And you just pass in the address and you pass in the client to create that network connection. And now we can see that this is um, a number of drops that is equal to 1,000 XRP, which is the number of XRP that the, that the faucet wallet funds with. So now that we have this wallet and we have this account that has XRP, one of the most common use cases of the XRP ledger is sending payments. So let's send a payment across the, uh, across the ledger. So we can create an XRP payment model and that we pass in the account, which is the wallet's classic address. The amount, we can just do something like um, 30 XRP. Got to import that function real quick. And the destination is this destination address that I happen to have in my clipboard. And so now if we just print out this payment, we can see what it looks like. So we've got the account from up here in our payment. The transaction type is indeed payment. The, the fee and sequence number and all of that aren't set yet because we haven't set them yet. The destination is that same destination that we have here. So now there's a lot of information that you need for a transaction to actually send it, such as the transaction fee or the account sequence number, which is used to make sure that you don't accidentally send a payment twice or send a transaction twice. And so there's a convenient function that both fills in all of those methods automatically, fills in all of those fields automatically, and also signs it for you. And so it's called safe sign and autofill transaction. And so we can just create that. Just pass in the payment, the wallet, so you can sign it, and the client so it can get a network connection to actually autofill all of those uh, fields. And then if we just print that out, And now all of these fields are actually filled in. The fee is 10 drops. The sequence number has been filled in. The, uh, sign, the, signing, the key that's actually being used to sign this is in the payment, and it has a transaction signature. So now we can actually submit this function. So one of the things about the XRP ledger is that a transaction isn't actually, uh, isn't actually confirmed until it's been validated. And so we have a helpful sugar function that checks when the checks for when a payment or a transaction has actually been fully validated and doesn't return until then. So we can just use that function here. And that's just called send reliable submission. And we can pass in our signed payments and the clients and then we can print out our response. This will take a sec because it's waiting for the transaction to actually be validated. And so the response was indeed successful. And you can see this giant JSON blob here, which I'll print a little better in a sec. And we'll just print that out a little bit. So it's a little easier to read. So you've got the account, you've got the amount, you've got the destination, the fee, all those things that we filled in earlier the date that this happened on. And at the bottom here, you can see that the transaction result was a success. The, deliver, the delivered amount does match the amount that we, that we expected to be delivered. And the transaction was actually validated. 
So now we can go back up to this block here where we check the balance. So now the balance should be down by, 30, by our 30 XRP. And so if we rerun it, we can see that we've now subtracted 30 XRP and also 10 drops for the transaction fee. Let's make this a little bit easier to read. Convert drops back to XRP. We'll just cast that real quick. This is a live demo, in fact. So now you can see that it is indeed now 969 XRP, and uh, so that's 30 XRP for the transaction and 10 XRP for the transaction fee. And that's the demo. Oh, we're not done yet. There's, of course, there's always more to improve on on any, any project that you've got. So some of the new features that we're looking to add are NFT support, which you'll see some of my colleagues demo tomorrow in JavaScript, simplifying the multi-sign experience, and further unifying our three client libraries so that they're aligned a little bit better and so that it's super easy to put down one library and pick up another based on what your needs are. So check out the library on GitHub or on PIP. And uh, if you have any feedback, you can drop it in GitHub issues or talk to us here at Apex, either in person or via the app. We highly encourage you to use this library for all of your projects that are Python and working with the XRP ledger. Thank you.